John, do we understand or do we have any inkling of how we get from boom economy to 6.6% with a glide path down to whatever potential GDP is? This is original, isn't it? Well, it's going to be very difficult with monetary policy still in full easing mode, and that's obviously going to be the key thing that people are looking for from this conference is what hints uh, Chairman Powell gives in terms of the timing of a tapering announcement. Um, but I just want to point out one thing that uh, you didn't pick up in, in the discussion of GDP report, and that is we get the profit side of the economy for the first time. And corporate profits were up a non-annualized 9.2% in the quarter. And that's very important for driving the economy. You know, economists like to think about looking at the demand side and consumer spending, but we also have to remember there's the incentive to supply, the incentive to invest, the incentive to hire. And those profits data, as we suspected they would be, were very strong in this report. John, overall, is there, you know, do you believe that actually the Fed wants to move so that they don't miss the boat? I think the Fed's divided. And I think Chairman Powell has to decide which side of that division he wants to come down on. Um, I think that we have a significant number of presidents uh, and uh, at least one governor uh, who thinks that 2022 is probably the time to lift off on rates. And to lift off on rates, pretty much everyone's in agreement, you have to stop buying treasuries first. Otherwise, it just gets messy because you're easing on the one hand, raising rates on the other. So I think it's divided. Um, but I do think that coming back to Tom's perspective, how do you transition from a boom economy to a more stable economy? You don't do it with monetary policy still in full well, easing mode. John, just to bring to you uh, some headlines from one of those Fed officials who do have that view that perhaps 2022 is a uh, time for liftoff. Uh, the Fed's Jim Bullard speaking in an interview on the Death Star, as Tom would say, on CNBC, uh, is saying that there's more inflation than expected. <clears throat> he expects at least 2.5% inflation in 2022 and says that the Fed should get on with tapering already. And this sort of echoes some of the comments from Esther George uh, that she doesn't see the Delta variant as potentially delaying anything going forward. Right now, based on what we're seeing, do you agree? Do you think that there is more of a liability for the economy if they hold out for longer and don't start tapering by September, by October of this year? I think there is. And for one reason, the Fed will raise rates when it has to raise rates. So the later you wait to start tapering, the faster you have to reduce the pace of your purchases and the more disruptive that might be for markets. So that's the first thing. We're at a very low level of yields. Prepare the markets for the taper and ask yourself, why are we still easing if we're the Federal Reserve? Especially when inflation, I mean, 2.5%, Jim is 25 to 3% for next year's inflation rate. We're at 3%, but we all see the risks to the upside. Um, it's a bet that uh, this inflation spike is going to be transitory. Um, a lot of the surveys continue to come out with very, very high price readings of the kind that we haven't seen since the early 1980s. So if you're managing risks, the greater risk to me would appear to be losing the gains that you've made, very hard won gains against inflation, than the risk that the Delta variant is going to cripple the economy. We have a very effective policy tool to deal with the Delta variant. It's called vaccination. Uh, and we're going to get booster shots. Uh, and states in which people uh, are not as um, highly vaccinated uh, have much higher breakout rates. And that's a real personal human tragedy, unnecessary deaths. But monetary policy doesn't really speak to that. And the claims data don't suggest that the Delta variant case surge is having a material impact uh, on the economy. Now, the third quarter may well be a much slower quarter than the 6.6% uh, in this number. Um, but I don't think that the consumer, with $2.5 trillion of excess right. savings, is going to be a major factor in the recovery in putting the brakes on here.